Good afternoon and welcome to TV2 Profiles. I'm your host Cheyenne Carroll. During today's episode, we step into two local school buildings and talk with teacher Cheryl Graham from New Philadelphia about what it was like to get into music education. And also we traveled to Dover High School to speak with their high school principal, Teresa Alberts, about what her transition from being a superintendent at Garraway to now being the high school principal at Dover has been like and how she feels to be a woman in such a higher position in education. All of that's coming up right here on TV2 Profiles. As a parent, we always want what's best for our child. In the case of one child, it may be going off to college. In another case, staying home and going to college. And yet, in other cases, it could be going right into the workforce. But how will they have the skills to do that? Buckeye Career Center has been the answer for one of our daughters. She's learning to do things with her hands that are going to be very valuable for her in the workplace. And we're excited we have Buckeye to thank for that. Adults who return to Buckeye Career Center to continue their education usually have one goal in mind. They want the opportunity for a better job. The fact is, adult education programs at Buckeye Career Center are less expensive and provide greater opportunities for job placement following graduation. It's your future. Get the facts. Buckeye Career Center. We put people to work. Find out more about your future at BuckeyeCareerCenter.org. Brilliantly practical scientist Harriet Tuttle's search for a more efficient life concluded with an unorthodox solution. Harriet created four more Harriets. Together they were a model of efficiency. However, while identical, they had their own interests and their own retirement plans, each customized with a Raymond James financial advisor, allowing them to enjoy life separately and together. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James advisor can do for you. Good afternoon and welcome to TV2 Profiles. I'm your host Cheyenne Carroll and today we are joined by Cheryl Graham and we are at South Elementary in her classroom here. It's a music classroom so welcome to the program today Cheryl. Thank you very very much. I really appreciate this. And it's important to start out. Um, you've been teaching since 1969. You were telling me a few moments ago that you started at Ridgewood which is where I graduated from and you have worked your way here to New Philadelphia but why don't you tell me that story. Uh, how you got into education and kind of that path that you've traveled to get here to New Philadelphia where you've stayed for so long. Certainly. Um, I was very lucky because my father was a tremendous educator. Uh, he was started as an ag teacher in Pennsylvania where I was born and so I learned from his point of view that uh, education was extremely important and so was music because of course at that time we had to sing all the way traveling from place to place you know in the car and uh, he had to substitute as a bus driver all the time because they didn't have enough bus drivers at that time. So uh, he moved to, they moved to uh, Parma because uh, my mom was, they were both veterans and my mom was a nurse and they decided that she could work at Cryle Hospital, in, at Veterans Hospital. So that's why we moved here. And uh, so I went to Valley Forge High School, which was, I was the first graduating class from Valley Forge in Parma. And of course I thought that everybody had classes of, uh, you know, there was a thousand in my graduating class, so I thought everybody had that, you know, <laughs> or that the Cleveland Orchestra people lived right down the street from you, which is where we lived, you know, but, but uh, you know, it was a wonderful educational process and, and everything. Uh, the, the cutest thing of all is my dad and mom were not going to let me be a music teacher. There was no way. They paid for all my lessons. They let me do everything I wanted to musically, but I was going to be either a math or a science teacher because my dad was a science teacher and and uh, so and math was my favorite subject. But uh, when I became a senior in high school, my dad and Mambo said, oh, well, Cheryl, just do what you want to do. <laughs> so that's no stopping you, right? Right. And my orchestra director graduated from Muskingum College. And all of my friends went to Baldwin Wallace because it was close. And we all loved the professors and stuff. And we got to work with them when we were in high school. But I didn't want to be where everybody else was. So I went to Muskingum. And you decided at Miss Gingham that you wanted to be in music education? Well, I was, before I came, I decided I wanted to be in music education when I was in, probably in middle school. And that's what I was going to do. And 
nobody was going to stop me. You know how determined some people can be. But uh, anyway, um, yes, and I went to Muskingum. I had a fabulous education there. And, of course, at that time it was Muskingum College, not Muskingum University. But um, <clears throat> great background. Uh, my orchestra director, Dr. Cowden, at um, Valley Forge had graduated from Muskingum, and that's why he sent me there to look. And the horn instructor was the band director, and I play French horn, and so he was real exciting. And, and so that was when, and I loved the community, and uh, Dr. Montgomery, who was the president, and his wife kind of adopted me. I'm not sure exactly how that happened, but um, then Dr. Montgomery passed away, so I used to drive for her because she couldn't drive, so I would have the opportunity to take this big car and take her some places, you know, when I was growing and when I was in college. But, uh, you know, just a, a wonderful background. And then I was looking for a school to do my student teaching that had a, a, a very good marching band and had a good concert band program. So they sent me to Riverview. And so I went to Riverview and had a wonderful time. In fact, the band director left and went to a convention and left me with the Christmas concert. If you can imagine, his wife was a choir director and I was the band director at the concert. But uh, we did that and uh, I met the love of my life who's been my partner ever since, Bill. And But we didn't start dating right then. Uh, he was one of the football coaches. And about two years later, we met on the right under the goal post again and, and the band director from Riverview kept saying, you need to ask her out, you need to ask her out. And of course, Bill was real shy and he didn't. And so one day, Mr. Branham uh, dialed the phone and handed it to him. And that's how I got my first date. And just, that was in November and in February, Valentine's Day, we were engaged. Wow, so it sounds like music has changed your life in more than one way. But when you kind of started this journey and you were in college, you know, you said you, you decided early, you wanted to get into music education. What was it like being a woman in that type of a job field? You know, now teachers, there's so many women teachers and there's a lot of men and they're all equally great. But what was it like to get into music? Were there a lot of women that were really involved in that or not so much? Absolutely not. There were probably three of us in the state of Ohio when I became a high school band director. Uh, you know, there just weren't, and there still aren't. You know, there are very few, and it's and at that time, uh, you were treated completely differently. You were, and you had to prove, you had to work twice as hard as somebody else to get the same respect. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, you know, it didn't hurt me, and that was, that was fine, and, uh, you know, different things have hap had happened because of that, but, you know, um, I had, I was really determined that I wanted to make a change in children's lives and through music, and because I felt it was that important. And do you feel like you're doing that? Still? I think so, I hope so anyway. Uh, my, the parents of my kids say I am, and, and really it's, it's really interesting because I have kids of my kids right now, and they, I was talking to Scott, Scott Robinson last night, and he was saying, yeah, and I'm still one of your kids. I said, that's right. <laughs> so it doesn't matter how old they get, they're still my kids. And speaking of Scott Robinson, you have been named the 2015 Chamber of Commerce, Tuscarawas County Chamber of Commerce Teacher of the Year. How big of an honor is that for you? I mean, just to see your name written beside that title, is that something that you've worked towards or something you were just surprised? I was totally shocked. I had no idea absolutely no idea and Jan McInturf of course is one of my former students too and he was the one who nominated me and you know it was just one of those things I and when they came when Mr. Zuckel is one who got to tell me and they called me over from west and had me come over at lunchtime and closed the door and said oh by the way you're not in trouble and you're thinking oh my goodness you know <laughs> but uh, you know it, it was just unbelievable it's still unbelievable well, teaching since 1969, can you go anywhere without knowing someone? <laughs> uh, no, ask my son-in-law. Or the cutest thing of all was uh, one night of, uh, this past uh, fall, we were at uh, Pound Grazio's in Dover. And I have a four-year-old and a two-year-old uh, grandchildren, okay? And we had taken her out to dinner. And so we get outside of the restaurant after we'd had a wonderful dinner, went outside the restaurant, and she looked at me and she says, Gigi, I have a concern. I said, Okay, Courtney, her mother and I are just laughing, thinking, what in the world? You know too many people <laughs> because everybody had stopped to talk to us. <laughs> I have that same issue with my mother. It's like everywhere you go, but that's a good thing. Yeah. So the last thing I was thinking of ending on here, um, educational standards, they change constantly. How do you keep up with that? And do you find it difficult as we move you know, into 2015 and there's more proposals you know, that the state is considering? How do you keep up with those changes year after year? I think it's real difficult and especially for other 
particular type of educators, maybe not so much in my subject matter because I am recreating within my framework of my classes and things. The thing that's caused us the most problem is the fact that we have reduced the amount of time we have for the arts. And it's so sad because, um, you know, every year we go to Akron Children's Hospital to the memorial service in December and the music is all performed and written by the surgeons and the doctors and the nurses up there and they'll be the first ones to tell you that's their part of you know music has been a major part of their life to allow them to be the fantastic creative doctors and nurses that they are and so i try to like i've been reduced to you know less than 40 minutes a week with a child if they're there that day and you know i just feel so badly for that but i try to get everything in i can possibly Okay, well, congratulations again, Cheryl, on being the Teacher of the Year. We appreciate your time. And uh, thanks for joining us again for TV2 Profiles. I'm Cheyenne Carroll. Joining me today was Teacher Cheryl Graham. <laughs>back to TV2 Profiles. I'm your host Cheyenne Carroll and this time around we are at Dover High School speaking with uh, Dover High School principal Teresa Alberts. Welcome to the program today Teresa. Thank you Cheyenne. So tell me a little bit about your travels. Uh, I know you from being the superintendent at Garraway and just you know in 2014 you switched and you came to Dover High School. So before you got into this administration side of things where did you begin your teaching career? Well I began my teaching career at Garraway also. I was 18 years in the classroom seven years as a high school principal there and uh, two years superintendent and then I had the opportunity this year to come to Dover as a high school principal and I was superintendent at uh, Garraway as well for six years also. Now what was that transition like to go from you know a teacher to the superintendent and then back to a high school principal is that something that you welcomed or something that just kind of happened out of the blue that you hadn't planned on doing? Well you know I don't know that you ever plan for um, situations but it was a good move for me I really enjoyed a high school principalship when I was there before and the, the superintendency um, the school was heading in a different direction than what I could support and I was fortunate enough to get the opportunity to uh, get another high school 
principal's position, and it's worked out well for me. And being in this school, you're you're dealing with the kids on a daily basis, whereas I'm guessing the superintendent's job was more in the office, handling numbers and books and things like that? Yeah, and it was uh, handling more of the teacher situation and, and the district as a whole and transportation and food service and, and, you know, everything falls in the lap of the superintendent. And with the high school principal, it's it's more building-wide with the, the students, the uh, the teachers and and some of the parents, but I have an assistant principal that handles most of that. She does a great job. So you're you're in the school every day here. We're in your office in the high school. Do you really enjoy interacting with the students and your teachers, getting into the classrooms and kind of seeing what's going on, even at the high school level? Oh yeah, yeah. You you love to see what the kids are doing, and yeah, you know, I I love the arts. I'm not good at the arts, but I love the arts. So it's great to see what the kids can do in in the art department and the drama and with the. Um, the music, they're great, and uh, we have some wonderful science classes here with the physics and stuff. So it's just neat to see what the kids are doing. And being a woman, uh, going from the superintendentship to the high school principal, we know there's a lot of uh, women, you know, high school principals, but not many superintendents. When you were going through your education, I know the last interview, we kind of talked about that. Were there a lot of women um, that were going to be in the administration side of things or more on the teacher side? You know, I, I think that probably 50-50 when I was going through my administration. There was a, a lot of women in that. Uh, with the superintendent, when you'd go to the superintendent meetings, there was uh, fewer women at that level. Um, but it, it's picking up. You know, we have more and more uh, women as superintendents. And I I don't know, it, it's, it's a transition, but I think they're getting more and more in the field. Do you think it's harder to be a woman uh, in the educational field and in the administration side of things? You know what, I, I've i never thought that being a woman has either helped me or hindered me in, in any situation that I was ever in. I was in athletics as, as a child or as a, as a student and uh, went to college and have always been in the education as um, I'm on the OHSAA, you know, and I uh, was uh, athletic director. And I don't think being a woman, I think I multitask better than, than some of the men, but uh, I don't think it helped or hindered either way. Well, and you had mentioned being an athletic director, and that's something we commonly think, you know, as a male would normally do that. Did you catch any slack for that, you know, being a woman that was the athletic director? I, I did not. I tell you what, I was very fortunate when I was athletic director that Kevin Keffer was an athletic director, Jim Thompson, um, Ron Hurst, and they – they took me under their wing, and they just helped me along, and, and uh, they really supported me. So I was great that I had a good group of guys in the area that, that really supported me. And uh, looking back, is there one position that you really enjoyed? You know, are you are you happy where you're at here at Dover High School, which we're, sh- we're sure you probably are. But is there, you know, one thing you, that you really miss about being, you know, a, as a teacher or maybe uh, the superintendentship? Uh, I tell you what, the position that I enjoyed the most was the athletic director. Really? Yeah, I really enjoyed that, and that was my background. That was my love. Um, but I enjoy the high school principal's position. I, you see the kids in a different light, and it's, it's just really neat. I just like being around the kids. And what advice would you give to maybe, you know, a, a senior that you have here at Dover High School? Maybe she's considering going into education or wants to be a nurse and just really isn't sure. I mean, what should they do to figure out what they want to do spending, you know, the rest of their life doing? Oh, it's hard nowadays to figure out what you do want to do because there's so many opportunities that we didn't have. I always wanted to teach. And I have a daughter now that's a senior and she's in strategic communications. I would tell the kids do whatever you want to do because the opportunities are out there. They're endless. And don't let anybody hold you back. You can do it. And your gender shouldn't matter, right? It, it shouldn't matter. No. All right. Teresa Alberts, anything else we should tell the public? Let them know about you and what you do here at Dover High School. You know what? We're here supporting the kids, doing the best we can. And uh, we really enjoy it and we try to make a difference. All right, again, that's Teresa Albert. She is the principal here at Dover High School. And for TV2 Profiles, I'm Cheyenne Carroll.